Hello, it's Dr. Triple Seven, and in today's video, I have a pretty cool video for you guys. This video was inspired by a YouTuber who actually messaged me and said that he installs Windows 7 on multiple systems and does the same thing over and over again every single time he installs it. For example, installing the same browser like Google Chrome, installing VLC, installing 500 plus megabytes of data. So basically, he's installing the same thing over and over again. And he's wondering, is there a possible way of customizing the Windows 7 ISO file so that basically it comes pre-installed with all this awesome stuff that he needs and installing on every single computer saves a lot of time. So I told him that I'd look into it and this video is basically um, on his idea and I think it's a great idea for anyone really and it's a pretty cool tutorial. So let's get started. So this is completely free, um, easy to do. There are a couple requirements though. So you're going to need a Windows 7 machine. I'm, I'm doing this on a Windows 7 virtual machine. You're going to need a Windows 7 ISO file or a Windows 7 um, installation disk, one of the two. And you're going to need two um, downloads that are in the description below. So once you have the Windows 7 machine and the ISO files, so either from online or from your Windows 7 disk, um, what you want to do is go to this website right here, which is the Microsoft official website, to download the Windows Automated Installation Kit. This is a 1.7 gigabyte download, so it may take you 20 minutes or so. So you just press the download button, and it'll install or download. And then also what you want to download is the RT7 Lite. What you want to do though is go to the next link right here, scroll down until you see the RT7 Lite beta build. This um, uh, allows us to do the service pack one and then scroll down to you see Windows 7 x64 or if you are using Windows 7 32-bit machine you can use this one but mo odds are you want to download it from this link right here all right so what you're going to want to do now is install the following program so what you want to do first is install the Windows um, 7 AIK program. Now it comes in a disk image file, an ISO file. So what you want to do is open up a program like 7-zip or WinRAR and extract it. When you extract it, you'll get this right here. You'll get all these files right here. And what you want to do is open up the Start CD program. What you want to do now is you don't have to do any of this stuff. What you want to do though is take your mouse and go over the Windows AIK setup. Click that right there. And through here, you can install it. Now, I already installed the program, so it's not going to ask me to install it. It's going to ask me to repair it or move it. But for you guys, let's say install it. So there's no ads or anything. So basically press next all the way through. Once you're done with it, though, just exit out of the program and we're good to go. Next thing you're going to do is install the RT7 Lite program. Once you install it, it'll show up on your desktop like that right there. And then we're pretty much good to go. The last thing you're going to do is take the Windows 7 ISO file, open it up in WinRAR or 7-zip and extract it. It should look just like this. So basically take all the files off of it and put it into a folder. So for me, I have this uh, folder right here. And I suggest having it on your desktop for easy purpose. So it should look just like this. You should have your setup file, boot manager files, auto run, all that awesome stuff. Now that we've set everything up, the fun has now begun. So open up your Windows 7 um, light program here. Click yes. This watermark will appear. Once this uh, window comes up right here, it will show up white. Don't not worry. Just press the exit button. And you're going to get this script error. Do not worry. It basically says that the URL is unreachable. Click yes. And then it will continue on with the boot. Once it opens up, we are all set and ready to go. So the first thing we're going to have to do is load the file to our program. So click the Browse and click Select OS Path. Now, if you have the ISO file and you do not know how to extract it, you can actually select the ISO file and select it, and it will extract it for you. But we already did that. So hit Browse and click Select OS Path. Since we put it on our desktop, it's right at the bottom there. Click that. Hit OK. And what it's going to do now is it's going to load it for us. Now, what you need to know is what type of Windows 7 this is. 
for me it's the professional version and you're also going to need to know if it has service pack one pre-installed or not mine does if it does not what you can actually do is go on the microsoft website download service pack one and slipstream it into this version so basically here we go i have professional so i will click professional you may have home basic or home premium or ultimate choose the one that you have the one that you have the iso for and then if you have if you want to slipstream the service pack one you can download it from the microsoft website check it off right here it'll bring up another window you hit browse load it on there and it'll slipstream it in there for you i already have it pre-installed on there so i won't do that i'll click ok though now the program will go ahead and load it this can take anywhere from a minute to two minutes doesn't take too long though and any second now it should start you should see the status bar right here start loading it once it is done you will notice it says loading completed right here and the task option on the side here has been unlocked so click that So on the top here, we have all the um, different options that are here, but you will notice you can't actually click on them. They're all locked. So basically, if you go to the quick start here, you have the safe. So it kind of tells you what safe stuff you can do. These are safe tweaks. You can go tweaked, which means allows a couple tweaked options. But my um, suggestion would just be select all. Click that so they're all selected, and that will unlock all of them. That would be my suggestion so we can go through all of them. So click integration and these are some cool things so for in the integration tab we have the ability to um, preload updates drivers language packs and applications so updates would be something like um, windows actual updates you can download the actual file load it on there simply by pressing the add button if you want to do a driver same thing just press add and it would be suggested that you put force unsigned signature drive integration. It's recommended for 64 bit images. So I would suggest clicking that off. The language pack is pretty self explanatory. Applications is a pretty cool thing. It will automatically install application for you. So basically, you just press the add button and you can choose a program, open it up, give it a name if you need to. Boom, it's there. So the next tab would be features removal. Mind you, these are features you want removed. So keep that in mind. So here we have, this is more for administrative purposes. So you can permanently remove the accessories, drivers, anything you want. You can even open up it more and see. So if you want to remove the games, for example, you check that off. Now no games will be available. Or you can actually go ahead and remove certain games. So it has everything basically that's possible. You can remove certain drivers, like USB drivers, so USB software working. You can um, go to the system and remove, you know, different programs like disk cleanup. You can remove a language pack, so if you want to save some space. Basically, you can remove almost anything to think of. Default features on the right-hand side, this is not removing, this is disabling them. So if you want to um, speed up the computer and you know you're going to use Google Chrome, you can disable Internet Explorer, which I would suggest. You can go to media features and disable media center and media player. A bunch of stuff you can disable or enable by default. Tweaks tab has a lot of stuff. I'm not going to go through all of it. Basically, right here we have the ability to remove shortcuts from the, from the control panel. So you just click on one and you can go default or remove it. So if you wanted to, you can remove all of them so that people basically cannot access the control panel. Desktop, we have things like the application timeout. These are more advanced settings. Explorer, so these are basically options inside the options menu. We have user account control, disabled or enabled or default. We can have services di disabled, system, visual effects. We can uh, Windows Dream Scenes, Hibernate Thumbnails, Arrow Snap, Arrow Shake, Internet Explorer settings, Media Center settings, and the cool thing is too, you can actually load your own custom registry. So if you have registry files or a whole registry itself, you can load that on. Unintended is a cool way to speed up your installation. So you can actually enter in your product key and that will basically automatically 
enter it in. You won't have to enter it every single time. Enter it once, done. Language, you can even name the computer name, the full name of the computer automatically. You can also create an account, administrative password, and you can add more users if you prefer. So you can get up to five accounts right off the bat, which is a pretty sweet thing. And you can make it an administrator or even a guest. You can also go to OEM information. For those who do not know what that is, if you right click the start menu and go to computer and right click that, um, right here where it says system and Windows Edition, this is the OEM information. So you can basically change it so that the um, computer company is like your own company name or whatever you want to do. And you can put the custom logo there as well. Here we have some just network stuff, nothing big. Regional, you can choose. Um, United States, you know, choose your time zone, that kind of thing. Run once, you can have something run for the first time, just only once though. And then you can choose where it installs Windows, so you can have a custom configuration so that it basically installs it automatically. Customization, you can do screen savers, you can load them on there. Um, you can remove these ones, so let's say you don't want this, you don't want that one there, you can remove it. These are ones that are pre-installed. Now, you can also, you can, so you can remove pre-installed ones, or you can add your own screensaver there. Um, the only thing is it has to be less than 5 megabytes. Themes, exact same thing. You want a custom theme, feel free to add it on there. Wallpapers, you can uh, set the wallpaper. Login screen, you can change the login screen. Um, make sure it's modified for this resolution over here. Gadgets, you can remove or automatically start certain gadgets. Documents, you can add some documents pre-installed there. Sample music, so you can remove those if you hate them. Media sounds, you can make sure or disable the sounds. And then more options, just some simple stuff like the Windows setup background, media player background, explore back and front, front back and buttons. Um, these are kind of custom things. So once you've completely customized it to your liking, you can go to the ISO bootable and you have a couple different options. You can directly burn it to a disk. You can create the image file. You can burn the image file. You can erase it or you can USB bootable. My suggestion would be create an image because once you create an image, you have multiple options from there. You can, you know, you can put it to the USB drive. You can do whatever you want. So my suggestion would be the create image tab. So from there, you just name it. You have the ability to split it if you need to split it. And then feel free to select split image and it, or sorry, click finish. It will create your image. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Again, this is um, creating a custom Windows 7 ISO file with custom settings. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave it below. And of course, thanks for watching. This is the Hacker 0007, and I'm signing off.